Uh, this is an advanced sculpting tutorial or an intermediate sculpting tutorial I suppose in which I'm going to try and make this jug here it's made by a company called Georg Jensen and you can find out about it uh, well uh, on the internet and um, uh, this is uh, what I hope I'm going to make in Fusion. So this is a Fusion rendering and this on the left is a photo and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So um, what we're going to be doing is sculpting here. This is really a tutorial about sculpting um, and so eventually I'm going to use this create form. Um, before I do that um, I'm just going to when we sculpt it's going to be useful to have some um, images in our document that we can sort of refer back to to make sure we're getting everything the right shape or when I say in our document I mean in our um, fusion model so what I'm going to do is say insert attached canvas and first of all on this face I'm going to insert um, the uh, let's do the side view on that face so um, you'll be able to download these images from the VLE or um, you might be able to find your own images for other projects but something uh, like that is good uh, I'm just going to hit OK for now and then I'm going to do another one insert attach canvas on this face and now I want to do the one that isn't a side view so like that and if I just zoom in I can see I've got that view and that view and the whole thing kind of gives me a 3D sense of what's going on. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do, uh, these canvases are currently at some random size and what I can do is to resize them to be uh, about the right size so that my model turns out about the right size. And the way I'm going to do that is to right click here in the model tree on the canvas and say calibrate. Um, now which one am I actually calibrating here I guess I'm just gonna hit escape uh, if I click that one then it's that one in fact what I could do is to turn off the visibility on one and then I'll definitely be working on the one that's still um, visible so now I'm going to say calibrate and what we do with calibrate we pick two points on the canvas and define the distance between them so if I choose there and there and I'm going to say this thing's about 30 centimeters high it might be a bit higher than that but um, that'll do for now for a, for an idea so we've scaled this whole thing up and now the one that we've that we're looking at here is about 30 centimeters high okay uh, let's do the same thing I'll look on this plane and I guess I want to make this one about 30 centimeters high so I can say calibrate um, it works best on this actually I don't want to do it up here this is a handle that um, goes beyond the top of the jug somewhere about here is what you want um, I think and I can make all of that uh, 300 as well and that's worked okay I think I'm happy with that so I can turn on both of these views and you can see that's looking fine um, one more thing I might just do um, they're not quite aligned down here at the bottom so I might just um, now which one do I want to move that one's a bit higher up so I want to take this one and move it up ever so slightly um, and if I go to edit canvas turn the visibility on for that one um, hold down uh, you can see it's giving me sort of 25 millimeter increments which is a bit uh, much so I guess I'll just try that by um, typing in some numbers if I go for about minus five um, maybe just a touch more I'll go minus seven millimeters those look like they're now sitting on the same base to me uh, so I'm gonna say okay um, ah the last thing that might be useful if I just turn on my origin it's there so what I might actually do is to edit the canvas on both and move them up um, to the origin so that turns out to be let's just turn on the origin uh, move them up um, 
that's that's 175 let's try 180 no 190 closer 195 that's sitting on the origin to me so I can say uh, okay and this second one the side view I also want to move upwards and I know now because it was lined up before if I do the same 195 that will be sitting in a good place. You don't have to put everything so it's sitting on the origin, but I think it actually makes things slightly easier later on. Um, okay, so I'm happy now that I've got these two canvases and they give me a sense um, of what the jug looks like. Obviously, in themselves, they're not a 3D model, but um, they um, they kind of help to give all kinds of images of what the 3D model might look like. So now we're ready to sculpt and what I'm going to do is hit create and that takes us into the sculpting environment. Um, and you know from uh, previous work on sculpting we're going to start by creating some kind of a thing and then we're going to push and pull it around until it's the shape we want. Um, for this particular project I would say the easiest thing to start with is a cylinder. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go with. You would get there in the end uh, if you started with a um, a box or perhaps even a sphere or you know everything works in sculpting but it's getting there in a way that makes it nice and easy for you. So a cylinder is a good one to go with and we want to say um, a cylinder is centered on there and it has a radius at the bottom interesting something like that I guess um, again we're doing it a bit by eye but that's okay um, and I'll pull the whole thing up so it's starting to look something <laughs> very very um, loosely it's taken the shape of the jug there um, it's probably uh, you these faces are what we're going to push and pull around in order to turn this shape into the shape of the jug. Um, it's gone with 8 around the diameter and 4 on the height. Just going to change it to 8 on the height. Um, the deal here is the more faces we have, the finer our control. So um, if we want, if we have lots and lots of faces, we can do very minute adjustments, but we have to do a whole lot of them. If we have uh, two faces then we've really got quite crude control and it's difficult to um, fit everything exactly to the shape we want and you know there are different um, compromises you can make there the compromise I'm choosing is about eight around the diameter and eight high um, gives us a good number of faces to work with the last thing I'm gonna do is to say I want one type of symmetry and that's mirror symmetry, um, and it's mirror symmetry about um, well this this face here. You can see that view of the jug that I'm looking at now is symmetric about the center. So that's the symmetry I want to add in. And I just need to check which one that is. This green line is showing me the symmetry plane, and width symmetry is correct. Uh, just one more thing at this stage, if you find you can't see the symmetry plane and things like that, it might be because you've got the wrong visual style on. Um, if you only had shaded, you wouldn't see quite as much information as you need. So for this sculpting work, it's definitely good to have shaded with visible edges. Um, OK, I've got the symmetry I want. It's creating a new body. Um, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to hit OK. And that is what we're going to start sculpting from. So first of all, you can either choose to start in this view and try and m move this around until it matches the shape of the, the jug in this view, or um, what I'm actually going to do is start with this view and try to... Um, for some reason I quite like it that way around, so uh, I'll try and... Um, move this now until it matches the shape of the jug um, and then I'll turn it round and work on the other side. Um, I'll turn off the visibility on everything I'm not using so I've just turned off that visibility there for the side view that I'm not using. Uh, good, that's most of what we're gonna do now we can start modifying. 
Um, and I think what I'm going to start with is by choosing, um, in fact, uh, there's just one thing to note. Everything that I'm doing here, I want the same thing to happen on the front here that happens on the back there. Um, so I don't just want to pull this panel around, I want to pull these two as a pair. So I'm going to use the drag controls quite a lot here. Now that I've done that and dragged out a box, it's picked up the, both of that, that pair front and back. Um, so that's kind of a, a useful detail to pay attention to. And now I'm going to modify this. Um, you can do it in different ways. I think this is not a bad way. If you start by trying to line, line up the top left corner um, and gradually move things around until it's starting to look OK there, uh, that's pretty good. You don't get much better than that. Um, now we'll try moving this one around. Um, you should slowly start to get a feel for what's working and what's not working. Again, that looks fine to me, actually. Happy with that. Uh, hit OK. Zoom out and we'll start coming in on this one here. Um, don't worry if you think, oh, I might have to go back and adjust one of the ones I've already done. You know, that, that happens. Um, so expect that and, and just go with it. Um, you know, I might have to go, although I'm working from top to bottom, I might have to go back up sometimes just to readjust things because they get pulled around by the element below them as well. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, this needs to be a bit more upright. Okay, that's starting to follow the shape reasonably well. It's worth being clear, I don't expect to get this perfect. I'm, I'm really uh, just trying to get something that is um, is good um, and I'm quite aware uh, this is a very sophisticated overall three-dimensional shape I'm working with so um, at some stage you just have to say that is a good enough match to what I wanted um, but at the moment this seems to be going all right I, I hope you can see roughly what I'm doing uh, it's just sort of adjusting it piece by piece um, and finally, um, that one there looks fine already. You know, this is pretty good. If I just uh, temporarily turn off the canvas and turn it back on again, you can see there's not that much that's jumping out as being completely wrong. If I overlay the body. All right, there's something over here uh, that isn't quite the same. Um, it's it's good enough, I think, for um, for what I'm working on at the moment. There's an interesting thing at the bottom. I think if we look at the canvas, uh, some of this curvature that we're seeing at the bottom is real, and some of it is to do with um, sort of perspectives and the way we're looking at things. It actually sits flat on a table, and that's quite an important feature of it. So when I come to do this uh, piece here and modify it, I'm going to try and keep this fairly flat but bring it in there um, and I guess I can bring this one out a bit if I do that and then move it outwards um, that's sort of working as the the shape that I want um, I'm going to stick with that for the time being as my side view just now is a good time to take a look in 3D and say did I get it roughly right in 3D well I feel like I kinda did there's nothing obvious that's um, that's not what I wanted at the moment there so I can say um, OK and now what I'm gonna do is turn off that view that I was looking at and turn on this view and we'll do the same thing trying to fit into this view um, Okay, what I might do here, the hardest bit to get right is the spout. Uh, the spout is difficult, and we're going to ignore the handle for the time being. We'll put that in later. Um, so because the spout is difficult, I'm going to start at the bottom and work upwards. Um, so I guess I will say, um, let's take this bit 
here and we'll just pull it quite a long way out um, and now in fact we can take both of those bits and pull them out there the danger of course is that the bottom of this object is now no longer flat um, there's not well I mean that is what it is um, there's no perfect way of getting this as you want it. We want the bottom to stay reasonably flat and we'll come back and look at that later um, but it's it's fine for what I'm trying to do. Um, so I keep going and I'm doing exactly the same things I've done before sort of massaging individual pieces to put them where I want them to go. Um, this one needs to be slightly more upright and goes out there. In fact it could be a bit more upright uh, something like that is starting to be a good match. Uh, okay. Uh, this one. Again, just a reminder, when I drag from uh, left to right, I only get the things that are entirely within the box I drag out. So I have to do something like this to get them. When I drag from right to left, I get anything that the box touches. So I'm using those two techniques without really commenting on them, but they're um, important to know about. Uh, I'm going to drag this one out now and see if it kind of, uh, yeah, so it does roughly what I was hoping, which is it pulls this one below it a little bit too. Uh, let's now sort out this one. Um, That's okay. Um, now you can get into slightly confusing things where you can't remember what's jug and what's picture. There's three lines here. The green one is the edge of the model that I've got. Um, if we just turn off the visibility on the body, you can see there's this funny reflection of the handle going on, which confuses the picture. But the line that I want to copy here is this outer one. Uh, so I'll keep going with that. Um, and I want to choose that panel there and drag it that seems okay this one then rotates much more like that and comes in that's tracking okay um, things are starting to come into place this panel here is a bit funny um, Okay, that's mainly following the shape. I'll need to adjust those two. Uh, this one I'm going to bring in immediately. Sorry, I'll make sure I'm doing both sides at once. Um, what I was actually doing there was using this panel to adjust that one, which probably isn't that clever as a way to do things, so I'll try and get this one right first. And uh, now I'm pretty happy with everything up until the top of the jug here. So let's jump around and go uh, to this bit and we will Pull it up like that, uh, pull this one in, uh, that point needs to come this, uh, if I hold down control I, um, seem to be only getting quite coarse movement there, not sure why. Um, Okay, I'll leave that for the time being. Uh, let's sort out these ones. Um, and I'm sort of ready for the spout. Uh, 
and just see if I can pull that down a bit. That's now a pretty good match for the shape I wanted there. Um, just see if I can pull that out too. Okay, that seems like a pretty good shape. Um, there's just one thing more that I want to do, uh, which is to uh, subdivide this panel here. Uh, and basically that's because it's useful to have more faces around um, when I start um, creating the spout because it just gives me a bit more control. So if I hit subdivide you can see all of a sudden where we had. Uh, sorry that went wrong. I think the computer was being a bit slow. Um, well, maybe I was being a bit slow. Uh, now you can see we've just got a bit more fine control on the spout. Um, so the first thing that I'll do is just to bring those lines there uh, back a bit. And um, I guess another thing that I can do is to try and take that point Um, and one thing to do while you're working on the spout, so you can see this is kind of coming together, just check it in three dimensions, because you look at this two-dimensional picture and everything looks fine, and then sometimes you find it's no longer really... Uh, I think that looks okay, actually. I think if I turn off the canvas, you can see it looks kind of like a spout, which is what I want it to look like. Um, sometimes you find you've managed to sort of flip them, things upside down, so if you actually tried to pour water out of it, it would go everywhere. Remember that in the end the functionality is somewhat important, and so you want to try and get that right. Um, okay, um, the next thing I might do is just to keep on pulling this point here. Uh, somewhere like that and say OK. At this stage uh, I'm going to say that's fine. I think the spout I'll never get a perfect match for the way it's shown in that view there um, but actually um, what, I, what I want almost more is something that's going to work correctly as a jug. Uh, I'm just a bit worried this one here could come. I uh, don't know why that wants to move so um, so much. Okay, um, now I'm gonna say that is about what I want as the shape of the jug. Um, there's an interesting thing that's happened because of the way I've done this. Um, if you actually look at this jug, um, it, it's kind of got a squarishness to it. Um, like uh, if I look on it from above maybe it'll become clear it's sort of like a square with with corners whereas the actual um, uh, the jug that uh, is sold is very much rounded everywhere um, I'm just going to experiment I haven't tried this before but maybe it might be possible from this top view to drag out and pick some points of the jug and kind of move them in so the whole thing's a bit rounder. Uh, let's just see if that made it weird or not. Not obviously, that kind of looks fine still. And maybe you could argue that the back now looks rounder than the front. So let's try and do the same thing on the front. Uh, I'm going to drag out and see what I get around here and then see if I can maybe just pull that in until the whole thing looks a little bit rounder again. Um, okay, well that sort of seemed to work. I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing that I might note is now I haven't quite got this um, full 
uh, sort of sticky out bit at the front. Again, I'm not up on the official terminology of this, um, but um, yeah, you can you can go through the different views in a way, just looking and seeing is that roughly what I wanted. I'm happy with that view. I'm happy with that view. I'm happy with that view, and I'm kind of pleased with the way the whole thing looks. Uh, so I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to say Finish Form. 